Over the weekend, the United States denied entry to an unsuspecting individual, former British ambassador to Uzbekistan Craig Murray, who 10 years ago made the critical mistake of exposing the Uzbek torture system that we now know the Americans supported and the British condoned. He was scheduled to participate in an awards ceremony next week, where former CIA agent and whistleblower John Kiriakou is slated to receive an award for exposing the Bush-era torture program. We're talking about a, a British diplomat, a highly respected, internationally respected British diplomat, a whistleblower in his own right, an exposer of, of torture, um, who has traveled to this country dozens and dozens of times. And then, for reasons that have not been explained to him, uh, finds himself banned by the United States. The Sam Adams Award for Integrity and Intelligence is given out annually to someone who shows moral courage in the midst of wrongdoing on the part of the state. In 2006, the Sam Adams Associates for Integrity and Intelligence decided to award Ambassador Murray our annual award for integrity. He came and uh, talked at several of our Sam Adams Award ceremonies uh, here in the States and also at Oxford, we did two there. We did our last one in Berlin. We go wherever the people are. Ten years after having won the award himself, Murray is still at home wondering how his name received what the State Department and Homeland Security call a hit. It means that the Department of Homeland Security believes that Ambassador Murray may be ineligible to enter the United States under one of the categories of ineligibility. Peter Van Buren is a former United States Foreign Service employee turned whistleblower after he heavily criticized the United States reconstruction effort in Iraq. Van Buren also just wrote a piece for Consortium News that explains how someone like Murray may have received a hit. But more often than not, particularly in cases like Ambassador Murray's, where there are political components, what we've got is likely a potential 3B violation or potential violation, which means terrorism. Um, you don't have to be a terrorist uh, to fall under this category. You can just be placed on one of these watch lists by one of the dozens of American intelligence agencies and organizations that are allowed to, quote, nominate names, and they do love their Orwellian vocabulary, nominate names to the list. In his relatively short tenure as ambassador to Uzbekistan, Craig Murray uncovered a torture infrastructure within the country that at once silenced Uzbeki dissidents and fed the Americans shaky intelligence they were so desperate for as the war on terror in Iraq and Afghanistan began to unravel. In 2009, five years after Murray had left the British Foreign Office, but still seven years away from being denied entry into the United States, Murray spoke at that year's Sam Adams Award ceremony, which took place in Washington, D.C. at American University. You know, there are over 10,000 political prisoners in Uzbekistan. Anybody who is a religious Muslim of any kind, no connection to terrorism, anyone who prays five times a day uh, as prescribed uh, will be arrested as a terrorist. Any young man with a beard will be arrested. He subsequently sat down with Real News senior editor Paul Jay to expand on the disturbing revelations that ended his career as ambassador. Many of them are killed every year. They're, they're in terrible, um, literally Stalinist gulags. They are in the old Stalinist gulags, which are still there, like Jaslik in the middle of the Kizilkum desert. And people are tortured uh, dreadfully. Uh, most appalling tortures you can think of on a routine basis. If you're arrested, you're going to be tortured. And that means you're going to have a broken bottle inserted in your anus. You're going to have your neck broken. You're going to have your feet held over a fire. You're going to be suffocated by uh, having a blocked gas mask put on your head. Even I came across instances of children tortured in front of the parents. You shouldn't forget the purpose of the torture was to get false intelligence, which vastly exaggerated the threat from Al-Qaeda. It vastly exaggerated the strength of Al-Qaeda in Central Asia. Um, and people knew that. Murray saw that Western powers like the UK and the US were far more interested in profiting from Uzbekistan's oil reserves and vital geopolitical position than they were with human rights. Uzbekistan sits at the heart of Central Asia. It has half the population of Central Asia. It really dominates the region. And Central Asia has the world's largest untapped reserves of oil and gas. 
Um, so anyone who's interested in acquiring uh, influence over hydrocarbon reserves needs to be in Uzbekistan. The Uzbek government plays this to its own advantage. The Uzbek government has no interest other than its own advantage and is quite happy to switch between different world powers as it's able to get something out of them. Murray says that when he went over to Uzbekistan in 2002, the U.S. viewed Uzbekistan, and especially its late president Islam Karimov, who coincidentally just died last week, not only as a long-term interest in the region, but also as maybe the most important ally in Central Asia when it came to the war on terror. Beyond firing off a steady stream of intelligence memos and reports to the CIA, which were then being forwarded to the British intelligence service MI6, and beyond allowing the United States to set up its crucial Karshi Khanabad airbase, the Uzbeks were engaged in a program of extraordinary rendition with the United States of so-called suspected terrorists, and it happened to be part of a network of black sites that spanned across many countries. The CIA were flying people in to be tortured, and I reported that officially to London in as many words. And this is in you know 2003, before anyone had heard the words extraordinary rendition. I didn't realize that the people being flown in were not Uzbek. The idea that you know, strangers would be flown in to be tortured. Uh, now, how, yeah. subsequently, how do you know that that's the case? Because um, essentially you're saying it's, it, the yeah. CIA was flying people in to be yeah. tortured in Uzbekistan. Yeah. I knew the CIA people who did it. Um, there weren't many expats in Uzbekistan. And you're talking quite seriously of um, not including military personnel, three or four hundred British and American uh, expatriates in the whole of the country. Um, so not surprisingly, we used to you know, drink in the same bars and, and, and meet. And I, I actually knew the CIA people who flew people in. Um, subsequently, we've learned a great deal more. Uh, for example, the Council of Europe um, inquiry into extraordinary rendition showed that 90% of the flights which took prisoners to uh, the secret base in Poland at uh, Shimano Shimony, um, flew on to Tashkent as their next destination. Uh, there's a great deal of other evidence that this was part of a global transportation of prisoners. And you, so you found out about this, and you yeah. send these reports back to your home office in London, and mm. they do what? Um, they told me to think more about commercial interests and less about human rights. In fact, the exact phrase was that they sent me a back a, a reply saying, we think you are over-focused on human rights, was their, was, was their exact phrase. The experience as ambassador of Uzbekistan proved detrimental to Murray's faith in the integrity of the UK as well as the United States. In fact, the ordeal shook him so hard that he says his understanding of human beings changed. I think my, my worldview has changed. I'm, I, I'd been a British diplomat for over 20 years, and I, I genuinely believed that on balance we were a force for good in the world, that, that I wasn't serving something which, which was detrimental to, to mankind in general. When something like that hits you, uh, that you know, the people you've worked with and called your friends for years and years and years are prepared to go along with something as evil as that, that resulted in torture and wars and death, um, it really does plunge you into questioning everything you ever believed in, uh, and I still haven't really come out of that process. As of Wednesday, over 10,000 people signed a Roots Action petition demanding Murray be let into the country. In a statement released Tuesday, members of the Sam Adams Associates for Integrity said they wondered, quote, which agency's long arms have reached out to disrupt our ceremony and to try and silence Craig. Whatever they intend, it will be bound to backfire. Murray has applied for a visa via the State Department, but that most likely won't be processed in time. And Murray himself said Wednesday that, quote, Despite the highly critical things I have published about Putin, about civil liberties in Russia, and the annexation of the Crimea, I have never been refused entry to Russia. The only two countries that have ever refused me entry clearance are Uzbekistan and the USA. What does that tell you? For The Real News, Thomas Hedges, Washington.